NCRT Class 9, Chapter 1 Matters in Our Surroundings As we look our surroundings, we see a large variety of things with shapes, sizes and texture. Everything in this universe is made up of matter. Example like the air we breathe, the food we eat, stones, cloud, stars, plant, animal, even a single a small drop of a water or a particle of sand. Each thing is matter. So anything which occupies space, that means volume and having mass. Koi bhi cheese, koi bhi padhar, ya koi bhi substances, if they are having some mass and occupies space, that means volume. So in simple language we can say matter having volume and mass. Okay. So anything which is present on the earth having mass and volume is called as matter. Now matter made up of a small particle. Itna small that you can't even imagine. So matters are made up of tiny particle. To prove this we have uh, we took two three crystal of potassium permanganate and dissolved in 100 ml of water. This is clear water 100 ml where we put 2-3 crystals of potassium permanganate. Then take out 10 ml solution from this and put into the 90 ml of clear water. And then we will again repeat this process. Put this 10 ml into the 90 ml of clear water then this 10 ml into the 90 ml of clear water. What we see? We keep diluting the solution like the 5 to 8 times and water is still colored. That means the experiment shows just a few drop of crystal of potassium permanganate can color a large volume of water say 1000 ml. So we can conclude that there must be a million of tiny particle in potassium permanganate crystal that means million of particle, a small particle present in one crystal of potassium permanganate. The particle of matter are very small, they are small beyond our imagination. So from this experiment we can conclude that matter are made up of tiny particle. Now characteristic feature of particle of matter. So first is particle of matter have space between them. To prove this we first we take one beaker in this beaker we take water and then put a spoon of salt. When we dissolve it it can completely dissolve into this water. Similarly we can do this experiment with sugar, salt, detol or potassium permanganate. They also got evenly distributed or dissolved in water. So uh, in the kitchen we also see that if we put, if we uh, made coffee and tea and similarly lemon water then it can easily dissolve into the water. What does it mean? One type of matter get into the space between particles of other. That's why they can easily dissolve into the water. Okay, so this show there is a enough space between particles of matters. Second is particle of matter are continuously moving. To prove this, we take a glass of beaker, a uh, beaker of water, uh, water in a beaker and then put a ink, a drop of ink. Now you can see it is continuously mixing on their own. What does it mean? And you can see it is completely dissolved. That means the particle of ink, ink are continuously moving and they intermix by their own. So from this experiment we can prove that particle of matter are continuously moving. They have their own kinetic energy. When we increase the temperature their kinetic energy uh, also increases and they moving very fast. They can move very fast by increasing the temperature. 
so from uh, this ink experiment you can see when you uh, the water is a static here and if you put a drop of ink it can continuously moving by their own and it intermix with the other matter now third of the third characteristic feature of the particle of matter is particle of matter attract each other that mean you can see here this is a iron nail and this is chalk and you can take rubber band okay and try breaking them with your hand by cutting or you can hammer this and stretch but about three substances you cannot break them easily that mean the particle of matter have force active acting between them this force keeps the particle together the strength of this force of attraction varies from one kind of matter to another for example if you break the nail it can't be easily breakable okay if you break the chalk it can take little more uh, less effort less effort than the nail if you cut rubber then you stress the rubber it will take less than these other two okay so from we can see the strength of which you are giving by your hand strength of this force of attraction varies from one kind of matter to another in some matter it take more strength and in other matters it take less efforts to break it so these are the characteristic feature of matters now this is the arrangement of particle in solid in liquid in gas phase so here you can see the solid are closely packed or more densely packed than liquid liquids little loosely packed and if we compare gas with li liquid gas are random gas particle are randomly present they are loosely packed now these are the properties of three states of matter whatever we see around us in the form of solid liquid either in the form of solid liquid or gas so if we talk about the solid solid have a definitive shape with distinct boundaries and fixed volume and they have negligible compressibility solids have a tendency to maintain their shape when subjected to outside force and solid may break under force but it's difficult to change their shape so they are rigid also can you see this is a box in which there is a we can consider it as a wooden log this is a solid so it is having a definite shape boundaries and a fixed volume and we cannot compress it it's having a rigid nature if we talk about the liquid it's having a fixed no it's not having a fixed shape okay and they don't have fixed boundary also they don't have fixed volume low compressibility and not rigid because they are fluid in nature now gas they don't have any shape they don't have boundaries no fixed volume but they are highly compressible like the liquid petroleum gas cylinder we get in our home for cooking or oxygen supply to hospital in cylinder is compressed gas compressed natural gas that means cng is used as a fuel these days in vehicle and due to its high compressibility large volume of gas can be compressed into a small cylinder and transported easily so they are highly compressible and their nature is also fluid they are made to flow now change of state of matter matter can easily be interconvertible from solid to liquid and liquid to gas by increasing temperature temperature what happened when in we increase the temperature of solid the kinetic energy of the particle increases due to this increase in kinetic energy the particle start vibrating with greater speed and the energy supply by heat overcomes the force of attraction between the particle and the particle leave their fixed position and start moving freely 
Here a stage is reached when the solid melt and is converted into a liquid. For example, this is the ice. If we start giving temperature, if we increase the temperature of this ice, this convert into liquid form that means water. If we supply more heat or more increase in temperature then it started boiling and water goes into a vapor stage and this is interconvertible if we decrease the temperature then this vapor convert into water and water convert if we more decrease the temperature then water convert into ice similarly by increasing pressure we can convert the state of matter like gas converted into liquid and liquid converted into solid by increasing pressure for example if we talk about the carbon dioxide gas under high pressure this gas directly convert into solid it not going through this liquid phase this is uh, this is uh, carbon dioxide in a solid state is also called as dry ice now what is melting point the temperature at which a solid melts to form liquid at atmospheric pressure is called as melt, melting point. In simple language, किसी भी temperature पर जब कोई चीज start हो जाती है melt होना तो उसको हम कहते हैं melting उस temperature को हम कहते हैं melting point. So melting point of ice is 273.16 uh, Kelvin. And uh, what is latent heat of fusion? And also the melting point of a solid is an indication of strength of the force of attraction between its particle. Jitna jada force hoga, attraction force of attraction hoga between the particles, utna jada melting point hoga. Okay, the next point is latent heat of fusion. Now, latent heat of fusion. Latent heat kya hai? For this we have to do one experiment. Take ice cube in a beaker and start heating it. Jaisi hum iska temperature badate hai to and put one temp thermometer in this beaker. What we see? Temperature never increase till the ice melt. Temperature uska kya raega? Wahi raega. Zero hi raega jab tak ki wo ice melt puri nahi ho jati. Last cube uska melt ho raoga tab bhi wahi temperature raega. So where this temperature gone? Where this heat gone? This is called as hidden heat or latent heat of fusion. It is basically the amount of heat energy required to change 1 kg of solid into liquid at its melting point on at its atmospheric pressure. So basically kya ho gaya ye latent heat? Wo heat hai jo hume dikhi nahi. Uska temperature humne jab ice cube ka increase kiya to water mein convert hua. But Temperature zero hi raya, raha uska. It is not increasing. Temperature is not increasing. Jab tak ki wo ice puri pighal nahi gai. To usi ko hum kehte hai latent heat of fusion. Now what is boiling point? Temperature at which a liquid boils to form vapor at atmospheric pressure is called as boiling point. For example, water start boil at 373 Kelvin or we can say 100 degree centigrade. So water's boiling point is 373 Kelvin or 100 degree centigrade. Now latent heat of vaporization is the amount of heat required to change 1 kg of liquid to its gaseous stays or vapor stays. It changes its phase from liquid to vapor without change in temperature. The energy absorbed in this process is called as latent heat of vaporization.